David Kirkpatrick, welcome to Keynons. David, you just put on your annual Techonomy event, one of the, the key events on the tech calendar. You're rare as a technologist. You're based in New York. You have a show that's in Arizona. Is Silicon Valley still the heart of technology, or was it ever the heart of technology? Is it where innovation is really happening? Well, certainly innovation is happening here, but it's by no means the only heart. I mean, I think there are many hearts of technology now. Certainly, as a New Yorker, if I said that technology was centered in Silicon Valley right now, I would be really attacked in the very building where I live right now, upstairs is in our building in New I mean, where I work in, in our building is uh, AOL's uh, co-working space where they have a bunch of startups right, right above us. And there's startups all over the NoHo neighborhood where I am and a bunch of other neighborhoods. And I, I think that, that it, it's, innovation is very widely distributed right now. On, the thing that's different about Silicon Valley is, you know, a few key companies that are so good and so central are here, and that... Well, you know, what are those companies, well, David? Certainly Google would be number one, Facebook would be close behind, uh, and, and Apple, those three. I mean, I don't know what order you should really put them in because they're all important. And, and so You put and Facebook other, before Apple? I said I don't know what order to put them in. I would say probably in terms of importance to the industry overall, I think Google probably still remains number one. For me, Facebook's more interesting just because I've studied it closely. Um, you didn't say that I wrote a book about it, but I did. Um, uh, well, most people... Uh, and I don't deny Apple is pretty interesting and important. I would have had an iPhone in my pocket except that my colleague is holding it for me. I mean, let's face it, Apple's an extraordinary in engine of innovation and creativity. And, uh, but you know, I think that those companies are sort of like... Uh, they have solar systems, you know, and those solar systems are highly concentrated here, although they do extend. You know, in New York, we have the biggest build, most expensive building for a while ever purchased in New York was Google's building on between 8th and 9th Avenues, an entire city block was built by the, the, uh, the um, Works Progress Administration. This is just a humongous building, and they have like 2,000 people there, so, you know, Google isn't just here. Uh, I, I just think that the innovation is scattered increasingly widely because there's an amazing impulse among the young right now to innovate, and it's, it's as, as dispersed as Lagos, Nigeria, and Boise, Idaho. David, you're one, of the, um, you're one of the most influential technology journalists. You've been covering this space for a long time. Has it changed? Is Silicon Valley more or less powerful? more or less central than it was. It's definitely less central than it was. When I started covering tech in 91. And, uh, you know, there was IBM and there was Silicon Valley, pretty much. So there was, you know, Route 128 in Boston. But I think I just came out here constantly. And uh, Fortune wanted me to move here repeatedly. And I, I, my wife's an artist, and she didn't want to leave New York. And it turned out to be a virtue to stay in New York. But, um, no, I think. It's, I don't know, it's, it's both and, you know, either or, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I is it don't a stupid think, question? I don't think you can say it is the center. But, but is it I a relevant question? Is it an absurd to, question? Everybody wants to like Silicon Valley, I'll say that. It's still the, mo the emblematic heart of technology globally, there's no question. You know, Russia's trying to build its own Silicon Valley, you know. You know, they have in northern Beijing, there's Zhongguanshan or whatever it's pronounced, and you know, the, there's a, there's a very strong impulse to recreate this. It's very hard to recreate, uh, but I think organically it is getting dispersed. David, you hold your Techonomy event several times a year. Uh, you held it in Detroit. Why? Is, is Detroit the next Silicon Valley? No, but Detroit, we have two events, first of all. We have our, our flagship kind of retreat type event, which you just attended, uh, but Detroit is a public event uh, unlike the one in, in Arizona, which is very global in, in every respect, global literally in its geographical purview and also uh, unbounded in terms of what we allow ourselves to think about, uh, whereas Detroit is an event we started to really be very American from the mindset that the United States is way, is underemphasizing the role of technology in economic growth, especially compared to a lot of other countries, and that we believe very strongly that um, 
the argument needed to be made that, that, that the connection between tech and economic growth needs to be really strongly articulated. And we decided to do it in Detroit because Detroit is a symbol of the economic failures of the United States. And obviously, urban revival in a number of cities, Detroit most of all, but you know, Buffalo, St. Louis, Birmingham, Alabama, I mean, there's a lot of cities that are really screwed up and have been basically neglected and hollowed out uh, because we have such egregiously bad governance in, you know, in the United States and egregiously bad understanding of how to jumpstart economic growth and, and particularly with technology. I mean, we, we're very optimistic at Techonomy. We believe that you can do an awful lot more with technology at the heart of your enterprise, no matter whether you're a government leader or a company leader or a, a university or whatever, than, than most leaders do. And so Detroit, Techonomy Detroit is a public event, and you know, our Tucson event costs 4,500 to attend, our Detroit event costs $175 to attend. And we do it to try to shake up the thinking of leaders, uh, especially about American challenges. A couple of final questions, David. Firstly, you have people from all over the world at your conference, at Futurecast tonight, there are people from everywhere. Tell me a place that no one's heard of that is innovating in an interesting way. Well, I, I, I think you could probably name a lot of places. It, it, it's hard to name a city in the world right now where there isn't some kind of entrepreneurial energy that's kind of aggregating into a community where there's meetups. I mean, we did two articles at uh, techonomy.com about Beirut. There is a significant entrepreneurial community in Beirut where they're building apps to do things like figure out which roads are closed because there's terrorist activity. I mean, that they solve their own local problems in places all over the world, but uh, there are people in Beirut trying to build apps to, that they are attending to spread throughout the Middle East for all kinds of health-related uh, projects. Um, and I, I think that's just a random example that we happen to have written about. I honestly think you can pretty much throw a dart at the map these days and find a city where there is entrepreneurial community emerging. Yeah, Chris. And it's, be it's because it's become, I, as I said before, there is not a group of smart 22 year olds on the planet that doesn't realize that this is where the future lies. Now, they may or may not have the skills to you know, facilitate the kind of innovation that we take so for granted in, in Palo Alto, of all places. But um, the will is there, and I think the more energy that these young people devote and the, the easier these platforms become to, to you know, utilize, you know, we know that entrepreneurialism is so much less expensive in an age of cloud computing and cheap open source tools. It's, this, it's become really easy to do cool stuff, even in biology. I mean, Irie Gentry's here, I don't know where she is, but uh, um, biology is becoming the same way. The tools to innovate are getting really, really inexpensive and people are just doing it in a dispersed fashion without like big bucks from Johnson & Johnson at some university. So is the area of innovation, is that what will give us the key to the new centers? Is something, I know biotech at your Techonomy event, a lot of people were talking about this being the next big thing. Will this be reflected in certain new geographical centers? Or is everything now, and this is the final, final question, is everything now distributed? Is innovation now simply a global phenomenon? Well, it's definitely a global phenomenon, but it, believe me, I'd be the last person to say that means that this part that we're in right now is unimportant or any less important. I mean, every major company is building some kind of ambassadorial outpost here in Silicon Valley because they want to get a little bit of this DNA because the concentration is still greater here. And the, I think also the lure of wealth is greater here. Um, there's a lot of things that are greater here, but it is distributed. That's just a simple fact because there's no secret that technology is the engine of growth and the engine of, of, of the future. So, you know, it's not going to get stuck in any one corner. Well, David Kirkpatrick, I think you just wrote the obituary for Silicon Valley. <laughs> You'll have to go back You're to New York. You're such a controversial guy, you want to say that. But I don't it's know a real if I said that or not, but whatever, okay. Well, everyone now in the world will, will target you, but it's a real pleasure to have you on TechCrunch TV, special edition coming from Futurecast. It's great David to, Kirkpatrick. Great to be had, thank you. Come back again very soon. <laughs>